Okay. But the problems start again, Ed, in two weeks' time. Because, um, and this came up yesterday with the CEOs and Gillan McLaughlin basically, I'm told, put three scenarios to them regarding the end of season buy. But you've got some mail on that. Yeah, so it is being discussed at the moment. So there's no firm word on this. But if I had to put my house on it right now, it's, uh, as I said on the news tonight, bye-bye to the pre-season buy. The pre -finals AFL's buy, yeah. yeah the, uh, sorry, to the pre-finals buy. The AFL's thoughts at the moment is let's keep rolling. Let's keep rolling. If things open up, let's keep it going. So they'll probably get rid of the pre-season, uh, pre, sorry, I keep saying that, pre-finals buy. So keep rolling. No buy if conditions are good to be able to keep going. So the next one is if the grand final's in Victoria, they are now looking at bringing the grand final forward that week. So there'll be no buys whatsoever. If Victoria's going and we can get crowds into the MCG, keep going. Mm. If not, if the grand final goes interstate, then there could well be a buy between the preliminary final and the grand final, which will allow everyone to relocate, do all the quarantining that's required. And from there, that means that uh, there could be even a Sunday Brownlow medal so that there's something on that weekend for the media and everybody yep. to aim towards. And, of course, the other side to that is that it allows then for a grand final parade and other festivities in grand final week. Which so we you'd... think would probably more likely be in Western Australia in Perth. But they would look at Adelaide if Port Adelaide yep. were there. So that's, yep. I think, if Port Adelaide were in it, why wouldn't you play it at uh, the Adelaide Oval? And if it's, uh, if it's a neutral, you probably end up at, in Perth. But they're still aiming to get it in the MCG, providing you get a, a crowd in there. What percentage, and, Ed? Do we know that yet? Uh, as far as the crowd? crowd no, yeah. no one knows. No. no, we don't know. I mean, at the moment... So it's, still, it's predicated no on a crowd at the MCG. I being think, Carol, well, that's well, your well, mail, that question was put yeah. to the 18 club CEOs yesterday, and obviously there are eight of them who are probably about 10 or 11 who can still make finals. And all but one said if you can't have a crowd, can't play it at the MCG. Interestingly, Gary Pert, the CEO of Melbourne, I'm told, said, look, you know, we would rather play at the MCG, crowd or no crowd, and I can understand that attitude. An attitude not, it seems, shared, certainly not publicly anyway, by Simon Goodwin, who spoke today. I love the game that's got fans at it. I think it, it's, it brings a core element to our game. If there's any chance of having crowds within Melbourne, I think we'd take that. There's no question about that, but you know, I think the fans love seeing footy and they love seeing the spectacle where there's people at the ground. It is a horrible thought, isn't it? Melbourne make their first grand final <laughs> since um, they lost to you blokes in that yeah, 2000. What do you think the broadcaster ideally wants? MCG? Crowds. Crowds. No, crowd or crowds? Yeah, yeah. definitely. And, and we know, how, and Matthew's spoken a lot about the Dreamtime game this year and how wonderful it was and there was no West Australian team playing in the Dreamtime game. I've often spoke, Ed, about, and Ross, I heard you say it recently, the best side often wins the Premiership, but this year it's so much depends on yep. where the games are being played. Now we're talking about will there be a buy or won't there be? So it can depend on well, the that top extra four, seven days. Yeah. Yeah. The top four will be licking their lips. That's if right. They're... And there might be clubs sitting back going, OK, we'd plan for this player to potentially get back for the first week or the third week, or could he have got back in time to play a game for the grand final? Look at those Alex Keith and... Well, if you go back to 2016, players, yeah. the Bulldogs, free yes. play them Critical the last isn't? round. They missed three or four. Mm. We knocked them over. They get them back. They go on the, uh, mm. a famous run. Ed, Ed, what we do know is that the clubs did say, look, will you please, they didn't reach a resolution on the buy, even though they all agreed on they wanted crowds, apart from Gary Peart, who's obviously going to be, yeah. you know, he'll, he'll be fine with that. But um, they want to know about the buy because it changes, as Ross said, the planning so much. There hopefully won't be a situation where coaches manipulate teams like they did when Ross was coaching and Brad Scott was coaching North Melbourne and created the buy in the first place. Yeah, well, Ross, yeah, but, uh, mentioned it. we actually wrested him in round 20 in 2000. So it didn't really affect the integrity. Well, and we went down and won, so I'm not sure how that... Although St Kilda 2013, Dockers, we did rest. Well, well I think there were so many teams in it, to mm. ma and, and there, there probably still will be next Well, they're going to make it... It's got to happen in the next yep. seven days. They have to make a decision, because yep. they've only, only got two weeks left. But that's interesting you say that if... That if they push forward and mm. just play through the bye because they can, you think that it's, it's quite possible the grand final will be on September 18, yeah. historically yeah. early. If, it's, if things are looking good at the MCG, they'll, they'll drag it in as quickly as they can. They may still leave it in on the 18th if it's interstate, but there is a bit of a discussion point, and I put it to you guys, because you know, we're having the same discussion that Gil McLaughlin and Travis Old and all the team are having at the moment. What would you like to see? Would you like to see that weekend where there's a week free, preliminary final to grand final, 
put the brown low on, get everybody over. If you say you're going to Perth, you'll have to do a five-day quarantine. Not a hard quarantine, you can get out and train. But then you can have so a grand no final. So no buy at the end of the home and away. Go through to the prelims. Have a week then, off like I, the Super Bowl. I love that. But get how do you feel, Ross? No one misses injury suspension. Yep. Best teams. Build up, give them a chance. Get the extravaganza of all the award nights done. And you know the other thing is, if you can get out from Victoria, you might be able to get some supporters out. over there. But what about then again? You have talked about those top teams that win, and you, you win on the first week. No, but now what I said was, so but no buy after the home and away. Yeah. Go through, you keep your advantage, you make your way to the grand final. You've That's gone through all that, you've kept your form, and then it's equal footing, same rest, same prep. Everyone available, I think, fresh. Mm. Because sometimes teams that win their way through now off that bye, they get to the grand final, they're a little bit worn out. Right, that, that, I want yes, no. Yes, yes no. Get rid of the, the first bye, bring in a grand final bye. I want no bye at all. OK, Caro? I'm with, I'm with Matthew. Grand final bye, love it. Yeah, grand final bye for me to get everyone and, over. And get rid of the and pre-finals bye once and for all. I agree with Ken Hinckley and, and Chris Fagan. If I had a choice, full stadium, Optus Stadium in Perth, the Dreamtime game, it was enough for me. They would, they would fill it. It would be incredible. And I think the, the Brownlow medalist is now getting washed over mm. by the enormity of grand final week. I'd like to see that, if everything comes back to normal, being after the home and away season, if that bye is still in play. Anyway.